Hello and welcome to the Biopharma Finder help videos. In this video I'm going to show you the complete workflow on how to process a stressed BSA sample. To begin we need to add the protein sequence. So we're going to click on the protein sequence manager. We're going to add a new protein sequence. We need to browse for the FASTA file and in this case it's a BSA protein. Now we're not going to add any static uh, modifications, we're only going to add variable. So we're going to click on the variable tab. Please see our other help videos on how to do this if you have questions. And in this example I'm going to add glycation and I also want to look for oxidation. So I have my protein, I have three different variable modifications. I'm going to save the protein and you'll notice that behind us it actually was saved to the list so then I can close. I'm going to go back to the home page. I'm going to go to peptide mapping and I'm going to name my experiment. So this is our stress study and I'm going to browse. Now in this example I have four different raw files so I'm going to open my files and you'll notice that I can add different conditions and so I'm just going to type high space low space oxidation space reference space. Now when I do that and I click down here they'll all be assigned. Now you don't have to match the words exactly you can change them by clicking here and, and fixing them if they're not assigned automatically in a correct way. So then I'm going to come and choose my uh, protein sequence, which is BSA. I'm going to use the basic default method and I want to edit the method. When I edit the method, it's now reading all of my raw files uh, because I have the checkbox enabled. It's coming up with parameters appropriate for all of the raw files. I can zoom down and I can check and see if the threshold is set where I'd like it to be set. You could lower it in, it in this example uh, but for time's sakes I'm just going to keep it set to where it is so I have time to actually show you how to process the experiment in a quick way. Um, I am actually going to adjust the time range too. So let's say we want to start at one minute and we can end at 41 minutes also because there's not much out there. Okay, so then we're going to go next. I'm going to use all of the default parameters. I'm going to uncheck the unspecified modification search uh, for right now and I'm going to use trypsin. I'm going to name my method stress study and if I would like I could export these results out and actually I'll do that. I'll export this and I will save this so that we can open this back and take a look while the experiment's running. So I will hit finish. It will automatically take me to the run queue and you can see that the experiment is actively pr being processed. So I had other uh, experiments queued up so you can queue multiple experiments at the same time. Um, let's say that it's four o'clock and you're ready to go home and you could just queue up a whole bunch of experiments and that uh, when you come back in the morning they'll all be finished. And it will tell you um, what type of experiment you're doing, it gives you your method name, your sequence, uh, which raw files you used, and the time that you actually uh, submitted this experiment. So, um, at, okay, so the experiment's finished running, so that was very quick. So if we want to um, open it up, so I highlight or click this, and I can say open results. And so the software is going to open up. And so now you can see that this is our stress study and we have multiple files and we're in the process and review tab. And we also have our mapping tab. So in the processing and review tab you can do several things. You have a great table down below that shows you all of the different results. This is interactive so as you click through the different components the information will dis be displayed in the various views. The filters are quite wonderful now so uh, let's say we only want to see identifications um, so we don't want to see any empties, so we want to see non-blank, for example. So these are all the um, components that have been identified, and you can scroll down to see the total number. 
So you can see there's 261 of them. And as you click on them, each pieces of information, all the things update again. And you can filter. So let's say that we only want to see um, the glycation modification. So I could start and I could just type in here. So these are all the components that are glycated. You could select all of these and you can right click. You could export just these to Excel and it will take the information, um, you know, just the ones that you've selected. You could export all the information uh, to Excel. You can do de novo sequencing and you could create an MGF file, which you could then search in uh, Proteum Discoverer. You could search against a larger database uh, for host cell protein identification, for example. Uh, let's see, what else can you do? So you have the residue information now. We provide you Delta PPM. We tell you um, if the identification comes from full scan or MS2. You can see all the different information. We have a ton of information in our columns now. Uh, this was a stress study, so we expect this modification to actually be the most abundant in the high sample. And so you can see, uh, for example, it's very high, 1e to the 6 here, e to the 4, and it's not present in these two, which it should not be present. Now there's another way that you can view this, uh, which I like to do, is see it um, as an SIC across all the different raw files. So what you're seeing in this view is you're seeing the first file. So this is a base peak chromatogram. You have an SIC here. So if you right click, you can uh, select chromatograms. So now we can actually show uh, the SIC for all four files at the same time. So if I collect that, it's going to show the all uh, four SICs. So now you can see that we're looking at all the same component in all the raw files. One thing you can do in the software, all the windows, you can just grab a hold and pull them out. Or you can, um, they're all floatable. So you can click here, uh, I think it's right here, and you can say floating. So it's, it's floating around. You can um, then dock it, dockable again, and then you can put it back. You can rearrange these. You can, you can do all kinds of things in the software. So please play around with this because it really allows you different views on depending on what you're trying to find or what you're interested in. So in, a, in this type of experiment, you might want to put, uh, let's see, you might want to put this in a different place so that you can see it. You could put it over here on a different screen. Uh, on a different monitor so you can expand this down so you can really see okay how does that really look you can zoom in you can see how the highlighting is done you can see here's an example where this one's clearly in the top two but it's not in the bottom two so this is a really nice way you could also add um, labels so you can add the peptide sequence or the uh, retention time plus the identified peptide to zoom out, you'll notice I'm double clicking, so that's a quick way that you have to that you can zoom out. You can also reset the scale, uh, so hopefully this is uh, very interactive. Over here we have um, the peptide uh, sequence coverage for the MSMS. If there's one present, you can also pull these out. Again, every window can be dockable; it's, it, they can all move around. You can show um, here if you want to have that one beside that. You can see how the coverage maps up. Uh, this is the experimental spectrum. You can zoom in. This is the predicted spectrum, which is shown above. You can uh, right click. You can hide this. You can, um, there you can see how you can hide the uh, predicted spectrum. You can also uh, change the, the parameters for the predicted spectrum. So you can go in and adjust. You can say, well, what would it, this specific peptide look like with if it was ETT? Or, you know, you can try different modes of fragmentation. Lots and lots of things you can do in the software. Um, also, if you have different modes of fragmentation in your data file, it will show that. In this case, um, in this data example, we did not have that. But if we did, it would show us. Um, we could actually see the different modes. You have your full scan data here um, where you can see all the uh, precursor ions. And this is the deconvoluted spectrum from them. Um, and let's see what else on this page. So on this page, you also have real-time optimization. So if you wanted to adjust some of your parameters, you can adjust them right here. 
and let's say we wanted to lower the threshold okay we think the thresholds too high so you can lower the threshold you can hit process it will save the experiment you save it as a new name you save your method as a new name and it will automatically reprocess this experiment rate real time for you so you don't have to go back and recreate um, another experiment and go back and do it all over again so everything's built in right here now when you go to the mapping tab what you'll see in the mapping tab is you'll see the protein sequence coverage map so here's your protein coverage map you can pull this out if you need to if you want to get a better view of it the parameters for this are right here or you can copy it and paste it so if you click this this is a copy button here's your parameters okay so you have parameters for this you can adjust them you can adjust how it's displayed so if you want to change how this is viewed and it will rearrange it. Uh, one thing that's really nice about this that I like is you can put your mouse in the middle and you can hold control minus and it will and control plus. Oh, wait, hang on, it's not doing it. Get it back in there. Um, you can do control minus and control plus and it will zoom that window in and out. So if you want to capture it a different way, you can do that for help for resolution. Um, here we have shading, and I'm not going to take too much time and actually tell you what shading is. Um, I, please see our other help videos on, on how to use shading, but you can see what it does is it shows the chromatogram, and it shows you um, the peaks that are identified and unidentified. And you can see in this example we have a, a lot of peaks that are not identified. Um, the BSA may not have been pure. Uh, would be part of what I think could cause this uh, but you're able to add them uh, different you can add them on top of each other I'm using the control button to click and add so this is just showing you a visual of what you've identified uh, I do want to show you in this example how to use the modification summary report uh, so that's shown here so if you click on modification summary it will take you to this page and and here we did have modifications that were induced so that, that is, this is a stress study so that's one thing we're very interested in looking at here's your modification summary and so you can see there's all different kinds of modifications and if you scroll over you'll see their abundances in the different files so let's look at one specific one let's look at glycation and if I filter actually what we'll do is we'll say contains okay so now we're looking at all the modifications that contain glycation and you can see there's time shifts so this is where the modification if it if it's negative it's it shifts earlier than the unmodified if it's positive it shifts later than the unmodified and then you can see the relative amount okay so here you can see the different levels and for glycation again we would expect to see that it would be in the first two samples but not in the last two as as this was an induced modification okay and then down here what you're seeing is the components that are checked or blue were the actual components that were used to determine the value of the um, abundance so you have your percent abundances here we often in pet finder people wanted to know how do you calculate that value well now you can see the components that we actually are using in that calculation and the areas for each of the raw files were used to determine the percentages and in some examples you'll see um, let me see if I can find one here for example you see that there's other components that aren't highlighted these are other components that contain that residue that were not used in the calculation for various reasons um, it could be that there were two um, they didn't fit your criteria for the modification summary so if you remember there are parameters that are used in the modification summary so if we click here actually I believe they're here you can see um, set the summary options so here are your parameters so this is where you have the minimum peptide um, intensity and you have your charge dates so uh, depending on what these parameters are set to some of these components might not actually be used in the calculation so you can also export this information out if you only want to look at specific ones you could check those boxes and you can right click and you can export all or you can just export the only ones that you're interested in 
and over here you have all your visualizations so if you uh, want to actually look inside of these and, and see maybe one of these identifications don't look correct and you don't want to use it in the calculation in the next version of the software we're going to allow you to be able to edit that information and you can recalculate the value um, you can say okay well I don't want to use this one and then you can say reprocess um, that's not currently available in this version of the software but it will be in the future version okay so hopefully I've given you a good overview of how you might want to or how you would process a stress study example I know this was quick um, but please go back and look at the individual um, videos the help videos that talk about the different topics there's also some PowerPoint slides or PDF slides that go over this uh, specific example and you can play around with these data files and and get used to using the software uh, thank you for listening